All right, guys, before we dive into today's video, we have an awesome Black Friday special with Live View Golf. You know you need feedback, and I really want you to get this to help you improve your game faster. Simultaneous video feedback is the only thing I've found that can really make a difference in your game super fast. And for this Black Friday, between today and Monday, November 27th at midnight, you can get 50% off the Live View Pro and 25% off the Live View Pro 2. Use code ECGOLF, we'll put a link down in the description down below. The next 50 seconds, I'm gonna explain how you can use it and why you're gonna benefit from it. Then we'll dive into the video. I hope you guys will take advantage of this awesome offer. I wanna to talk to you today about Live View Golf. Now you guys hear me say all the time that you need feedback when you're practicing. You need to know if you're actually doing what you're trying to do. And the best way to give yourself feedback ultimately is video. And not only is video the best way to give yourself feedback, but being able to see yourself simultaneously as you're doing a movement is the best form of video feedback. It's the best way I've seen to make changes in your swing and be able to correlate the differences between your feels and your reels. Live View is super easy to use and set up. Simply set it up behind or in front of you. You connect it with your iPad or phone, pop that on the ground. You can actually do your practice, see yourself as you're doing it, the best way to expedite your process. I encourage you guys to check out Live View Golf. We'll put a link in the description down below with a coupon code. All right, guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get an inside out club path. The easiest way to do that, and really the three must-dos, right? The three non-negotiables that you can put in your swing to automatically get your club working from inside all the time. With me, Mr. Trevor Salzman. Appreciate you as always. Absolutely, great Another to be here. One. Um, so in today's video, we're gonna talk about what those three things are. We're gonna give you an awesome drill that uh, I saw Trevor do that we've never shown on this channel before. I've been doing videos for seven years. I don't know how many thousand videos. We've never shown this before. So um, we're gonna show you that, give the drill and the feels. Trevor, why don't you tell us what those three things are and then we'll set up the initial um, station. We'll kind of work through them. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically you've got three things I would say that you've got to do, that you have to do in order to hit a draw. One, we have to come from the inside. Path has to be coming from the inside. Number two, we have to have the club face minutely close to what the swing path is. And number three, we've got to be able to turn to create our space or create a runway for the arms to be able to come from that direction. And then I think inside of that, if this is an area that you struggle with, you probably need to set up a station so that we can understand what it is that's going to create those things for us right there. Yeah, and I would even say those same things just in a different way, Trevor, be like, hey, the three things you got to do you probably need to set up a feedback station to your point. You, yep. need, a, you need awareness of the club path coming from inside. Uh, number two is we got to make a big enough backswing turn and depth to create the runway, like yep. you said. And then number three is, is the club face. So why don't we show the station? Because if I'm sort of saying, hey, that's the number one thing, you have to have a feedback station so you have awareness of the club. I really like this one and we haven't shown this. So if you could show us how to set it up and then we'll hit some balls with that. Absolutely. So what you'll need is you're going to need about, you're going to need three sticks. And so the first stick that we're going to set right here, we're going to relate this to target line. So we're going to call this right here, this orange stick right here, we can call this target line. Yeah, so now we have a relationship to where our target is. So we know the golf club has to be coming from the inside of that. If we have the golf club coming over that, we're not going to hit a draw. Yeah. Okay? So the next place that I would go is I would measure my golf club so that I know the length of it. And from inside of that, I'm going to go to give myself a little extra leeway. I'm going to do this a foot width, a foot mm. width inside of ball line. Okay. And a then I'm going width. to take this. I'm going to take one more stick right here and I'm going to place this right in the center of the grip. So this would be about the width of my foot right here inside of target line so if i went right here there's my shoe mm. that's a foot width and then i like using this as a visual if i connected basically a straight line to the golf ball from there that would be the direction that my golf club is coming oh, from like right there so now i've got my target line i've got the direction that i need the golf club to come from and now we can go into the steps of creating space by rotating enough in our backswing or calling this a runway for the arms to come from the inside. And then we can start to sync it up with what we do with our face to path relationship. 
Love that. And I think this is so good. So one foot, one foot inside and then uh, middle of the grip with the club down the line. And so like to start with, what we're saying is, hey, this is gonna give you awareness of the club head staying inside the stick to be able to swing from the inside. But if this is all you do without the other prerequisites, there's still things in your swing that either A, aren't gonna allow you to swing from inside or B, make it way more difficult, like Trevor mentioned, the turn to create the runway and the club face. So first things first, Trevor, why don't we hit one or two with just the stick in? Let's just do this first piece. Yeah, absolutely. So basically once this is in, they can start hitting balls and they just have to keep the club in inside of this. That's yes. the whole. Our goal is we have to keep the golf club inside of this. And like what we were doing right there, Eric, let's move the golf, let's move these alignment sticks back with enough room so the golf club can still come in and we can actually still make a divot from right here. Yeah. So you can see if I work this here, this golf club is coming from the inside and I'm gonna be hitting yeah, pretty perfect. soft little draw from right there. Okay? So that is a very simplistic relationship. Firstly, to understand what it's like to have the golf club coming from the inside. Uh, when you start doing this, I probably wouldn't go at Mach 10 if you're, right. if you're somebody that's <laughs> steep and over the top, I wouldn't go with the speed of light. I would probably stand here and I would do a lot of rehearsals and say, okay, what does this feel like? What does this feel like? I'm back down from the inside. Now, what is it going to feel like to deliver this golf club on this new direction? Because if we don't have this runway, because we've opened up our body right here, yep. we're not going to be able to get the golf club in there. If all I do is move my arms right here, this is going to get stuck. I'm going to have to do it with a very yeah, strange compensative way right there. Let's dig into that. I think in, to that point, you can start to hit some with just this end, start short and slow and just try to get an awareness. But moving on to the second point, right, with the body turn. So first things first, and Trevor said this, to create a runway for the arms and hands, which I think is such a good, let me just hop in there for one second just to show the visual. So that immediately when he said this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. When we make a backswing, we need to turn enough and get enough depth of the arms, hands, and club so that from here, this runway to get the arms and hands, I've got a ton of space. Like Trevor mentioned, if I go back and I have no turn, no depth, I have no space to get my arms, hands, and club in front of me. From this sort of spot, I'm going right over the top. So to swing from inside actually starts, starts at setup, but it starts really with when you make a backswing, getting enough of the turn and the depth. Trevor, let's give them a very simple way to think about this. Um, I know you like to talk about the right hip and the right angle reference point. Yeah, absolutely. So like if Eric's in here, and if we look at this from face on right here, what you'll notice is so he's got the inside of his right ankle, and that's basically lined up with where his right hip is. Where we would see a lot of people get in trouble is they move it this way. Mm. Good luck creating a runway right there. Yeah. Okay, so from here, he's gonna create space. So you'll notice that this hip has now moved inside of his right heel. So he's opening up the right rib cage, the right shoulder, the right hip to where now these arms they have plenty of space to be able to come back down from the inside right there. And so what it is, what we're doing right there, like Eric just demonstrated beautifully, is we're creating space with the trail side of the body right there, which is allowing the arms to work back behind us. And it's allowing us to create more handle depth so that where can the club come from now? It can come from the inside, it can miss that stick. So Trevor, when I'm doing this with the stick in, when I'm doing the takeaway, I'm, I'm thinking about getting the hip inside the ankle. Yep. I'm getting really my whole trail side, hip, ribcage, shoulder, like you talk about, turned. This club head is almost going to arc just inside of this, right? I'm going to just barely miss that. Absolutely. Okay. It's going to be working on the inside of that. Get my right side turned around so my right shoulder, hip, and ribcage to create the space. And let me just bunt one out there from there. Yeah, so absolutely. this would be sort of part number two. Let me give myself an awareness. I love this. You guys can set this up somewhere at home in your backyard and literally keep it there forever and learn how to swing inside. This is such a good drill, dude. Really, really like this. Okay, so to make it easier for me to create a runway, I'm gonna turn my right side, right hip inside the ankle, turn my right side back to give myself a runway. And there's probably like, oh, be a 10 yard draw. Exactly. Swinging from inside. So, okay, I can do that, right? I can get used to that, but we know if I'm doing this Trevor and I have my station set up correct, I turn really good and I want to get the club inside. But if I come down and that freaking darn club face is too open, I'm all, which is a lot of you watching, I'm always going to swing over the top 
because it's the only way to get the ball to the target. Exactly. Right? So for me to have this inside, we know we need to have the club face square. I really like that little, can you grab that alignment rod? Just yeah, show me a little visual. Absolutely. So you guys gotta make sure the face stays square to the path so you can swing from slightly inside, okay? You have to make sure the club face is good. So when we look at, when we look at face to path relationships, okay? So if I started these right here, it's set up. These are basically an equal. So from here, if I took this and I ran this down the lead side of the shaft and I was gripping it. Yep. Well, if I get the alignment stick on top of the club face, cool. this would now be open. If I get the club face on top of the alignment stick, this would be closed, which we can see that relationship. So now we have a visual and we have a feel that where neutral is. This would be a little bit closed. This would be a little bit open. So what I like to do here with players that really struggle with face to path relationships is if I was in a setup here, I'm going to work this in so we can see here the club face is still sitting slightly on top of where the alignment stick is. Yep. I can work this up to the top. I'm coming back down from the inside and I still have this relationship where people struggle, where they hit those push right, block, slices, or it causes the over the top is we get the alignment mm. stick too far on top of the club face. So I can come from the inside right here and we're going to be SOL right there. Four, okay? right. doesn't matter if I come from the inside anymore yeah. because now I'm hitting golf balls out of bounds. So being able to create a visual, a feel inside of a station that we can put all three of these things together and I can check that, I can feel that, I could re-deliver that to impact. This is where we're learning how to create the feels that we need to produce the shot that we want. A couple quickies, can you take your setup there one more time? That was Absolutely. really good. Hey, put that stick back in, Trevor. Yep. So as you guys are referencing the stick relative to the club head too, I also like to have a visual of the toe to heel. Yep. If you just, let's go to P2 for a second. So when Trevor does this good and this stays on top, just a different way to look at the same thing. You just want to have the toe slightly in front of the heel when you go back and then let's go up to the top and come back down the six. And then when he comes back and this stays, the toe stays just in front of the heel. Just a very easy reference point you can use to keep the club face square. And I'm going to add a layer on okay. to what Trevor said there too, which is, hey, if you come from inside and the face is open, you're going to hit it four right. <clears throat> But I would say over time, and Trevor would say the same thing, if your club face is open, your brain isn't even gonna get you to inside in the first place. It might with a drill, but when you take it away, you're not. What this video is about is about getting you to swing from inside automatically. So what do we need to do earlier to make your brain automatically wanna do it? We've got awareness with the feedback station part one. We've got a sufficient backswing turn and depth to create a runway part two. And we've got a club face that's square close to the path part three. And Trevor and I have given a lot of golf lessons. If you get those three things in place, you will be able to swing from inside automatically. But if you don't, any one of those three, it's either not gonna happen at all or it's gonna be extremely difficult. And I think that was our main message 100%. to help you guys with today's video. Trevor, killer as always. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below for either of us. We're gonna link Trevor's info, online lessons, in-person lessons. He's down here in South Florida, awesome golf coach. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. This is one of my favorite drills we've never shown before. I urge you to set this up at home and get really good at those. GoronGolf.com also, um, we'll put that on there. We'd love to work with you. Thank you guys for watching.